Hello, our headlines for this evening. Members of Parliament are being criticised for having a low attendance at a Commonwealth debate. Serve your community is what Home Secretary Nafluf says in a new recruitment drive for the public services. And Commonwealth Games are currently taking place and we take a deeper look on what has been going on. Hello, welcome to 5 News this evening. Today is Tuesday the 12th of May 2020 and I am Sean Rurak, your host for today. Today, Tonight we have three guests with us on the show, but first um, we have a little report on the Commonwealth debate. Last night a debate was held regarding the topic of the Commonwealth in the Commons. This saw an unanimous support for a motion to send letters to the Speaker of the House, David Langley, and the Prime Minister, Theo Novak. The letter, which we have simplified and was from all members who attended, stated, we are saddened by the lack of participation by the wider House. It is clear with only four representatives attending Sunday's summit, the Commonwealth is being neglected. Members also included in the letter talked with the Commonwealth Sec Secretary General Charles Stewart and fellow heads of Commonwealth governments regarding the future of the organisation. Member of Parliament for South Ulster and La 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 oh mate, I have no clue how to pronounce it. Sorry if I pronounced it wrong. James Atchison has particularly voiced his concerns, stating. The debate provided the opportunity to highlight some of the issues facing the Commonwealth. While some solutions are raised, it was decided that public letters to the Speaker and the Prime Minister were, were required to draw attention to the issue. Do you think the government is doing enough for the Commonwealth? I'll leave that for you to decide. Now it is, t it is time for an advert break. I will see you after the break. Hello, we are back here at the State of the Art sh Five Studio. We have we would have had three special guests, unfortunately, um, but w one of our guests could not make it due to family issues. Um, um. So, but first guest we have with us is Home Secretary Nathlus. Welcome to the show. Sean, how are you? Um. I'm I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, we also have another guest, which is um tactical fire firearms constable Oliver J J Randford. Welcome right, to the Paul. show. 
How are Good you? Good to have you on board. I'm great, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm alright, cheers. Well, I welcome you both onto the show, and it is a pleasure to have you. Let's dig right into the interview. First of all, I would like to start with you, um, Home Secretary. Please explain your thought process behind the new recruitment drive, Serve Your Community. Thank you. So, obviously, during this time of this uh, global pandemic, we have uh, seen an increase of activity at Eastbrook, with servers of 40 to 50 players at all times, and an increase when server startups are hosted. This means we need an increase of uh, Greater, Man Greater Manchester Police Constables, Northwest Ambulance uh, Service Paramedics, and also firefighters to uh, help with the increase of activity and scenarios taking place. Uh, our campaign for this, obviously, the rest of the term, and hopefully it's continued into next term with the support of the next government, etc. Um, so our slogan, uh, Serve Your Community, is basically we want people to start stepping up and serving your community more. We have lots of people who could, as a civilian, try and pull away from maybe the crime sector or maybe advance themselves from the private sector to show their skills as a constable, a firefighter, or a paramedic to uh, help the streets of Eastbrook and to grow our public services quite a lot. We have already seen an increase of people applying for public services quite a lot recently, and we want to keep this going with our new campaign. Uh, please share this on Twitter and whatever you can to boost our recruitment, dri recruit recruitment drive. Thank you, Mr. Home Secretary. That it is very important that we do get an, enough people protecting our streets of Eastbrook because I know when I go to Eastbrook, I sometimes don't feel safe. I don't know about um, my producer, Potch, but yes. Um, our next question for you, Mr. Home Secretary, we'll stay, stay with you for a bit longer. Um, how, you, you basically already answered this question, so I, I'll... I'll go for another question. How do you feel this coalition government have done so far in the Home Office? So in the Home Office, obviously there's uh, four of us with the recent uh, adding on as Dennis Monti as uh, Immigration Minister, what a legend. Uh, he is protecting our borders uh, from all these uh, immigrants, let's just say that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've worked with uh, Joshua Langley and obviously Toby, who's uh, Toby's in uh, New Labour and Josh is a Lib Dem. Uh, within the Home Office, we've all worked pretty well together. We've all come quite close as friends. We all decide on issues and debate, what's like certain things are happening, obviously within the services. Obviously, we have our dedicated roles, but we all do speak about the general issues together and decide as a team. We, as a coalition within the Home Office, we've, uh, we're still producing more legislation, uh, which we're going to continue doing. And obviously, we've had a few pieces of legislation passed uh, the last few weeks. And yeah, so it's been good working with uh, the Lib Dems. I think it's going to last, uh, especially within the Home Office. We do work well as a team. As for me, Dennis, Toby and Josh, absolute legends. Mm -hmm, that is true. Karanka and Theo, I know for sure, have a very, very strong relationship. Um, I would say... We main, mainly due to... um being in the Labour Party together as leader, not leader, but they were in the cabinet team together when Conor Novak was um, party leader. That takes you back, but yeah. I would say what that our say? whole government is quite close. We all work together quite extremely together, even if it's different parties. Everyone works together as a team. Like, if a decision is made, it wouldn't be like, oh, it's a new Labour decision or a Lib Dem position. It's like a government. It's like we're not two separate parties, but we are kind of thing because we are all like teams, friends, and it works pretty well, all, all of us together, actually. Well, that's good to hear. Um, We'll move over to you, Mr. Ranford. Um, so um, you're a tactical firearms um. Constable, what is life like on the front line at Eastbrook protecting our streets? Well, it's pretty straightforward for me due to me having a vast amount of experience within the policing sector, but when it comes to arresting a subject who is non-compliant or someone who is likely to leave to avoid arrest, it becomes a bigger challenge to clamp down on these sort of people. 
but overall working front line at Eastbrook can be chaos, especially through peak time, so working around the back can pose a problem, as that sometimes police resources can become quite limited, but we work our best always and no challenge like can become too big for us. Well, thank you for answering that so honestly, and we appreciate your hard work in keeping the streets of Eastbrook safe. Um, back to you, Naplus. Um, so, what do you make of the great Greater Manchester Police investigation that has been reported by many media outlets? I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm. I'm not sure personally about it much, but. So uh, this um, the investigation you're talking about is the video which was posted um, on the on Channel Five and other news sources. Is this correct? Um, yes, this is what my producer Potch um, told me about. Yes. Yeah, so I, I reviewed the video and GMP Command dealt with the investigation themselves. Um, it was clear by watching the video that the uh, subject or the let's just say. The person committing the crime was not following lawful orders from the officers and there was a few issues which did take place but I have full trust in Gold Command and I am aware that it was fully dealt with by the command team and I am happy how the way it dealt with it was dealt with. Um well that's that's great, great. And um another question for you, um Oliver J. Ranford. Um what has been your favourite part of being in Greater Manchester Police? I mean, I've served here on and off since 2014, I'd say, so there have been many favourites I could tell you. However, two of my favourites about serving is uh, arresting people who pose a threat to forward safety to the public, and uh, an even bigger one is when the force comes together as a team to do so. Mm-hmm. Well, that that is great to hear. Like the team, the teamwork aspect, and meeting meeting other people within Great yeah. Manchester Police, because I know there is definitely a family feel around it. Um, yeah. Um, our last question to you, um, Mr. Ranford. This is a more of a chance to just have a voice, see if, because you know, not everything is perfect. What do you feel could be improved in the Greater Manchester Police? This this is a grand chance for you. To voice your concerns to the Home Secretary and the rest of Britain. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, I think one thing that could be improved about Greater Manchester Police is the basic training that's given to constables at the start of their service. Like perhaps they should be educated further on the laws set out in terms of charges against criminals to avoid unfair jail times, etc. Uh, I think that would make it a bit smoother. Well, um, does the Home Secretary have anything to say to that? Uh, so I've attended many Greater Manchester Police trainings and I of course have gone to trainings myself because as an ex road, uh, I used to be in road policing um, as a constable and I am now still a special constable until obviously I go back to full time at the end of this term most likely. Um, so yeah, so obviously the training, I feel, so I've done the training a few times, I've visited the training the training uh, is done in a few standards, and it's a theory, practical, an exam, supervision, and all that. So maybe there could be some more advanced training, maybe extensive training on more laws, etc., which can be looked into. And I'll speak to the uh, training team and go gold command on this. And it's obviously an issue that that some officers are s struggling to. Let's obviously they know the law, but sometimes there may be a few issues with laws which aren't taught. Uh, which, but most laws are covered, and if there is an issue like this, this needs to be reported so we can cover this and sort these issues out. I'll have a chat with the probation team, see what uh, like advanced or extensive training we can do. But uh, neighbourhood policing are actually doing a training every Saturday night, which is advancing the neighbourhood policing constable. So neighbourhood neighbourhood policing is a uh, so not a specialist unit like tactical firearms, serious crime defeat serious crime division or roads policing so like so it's like a normal uh like prisoner transport or basic duties so obviously they are obviously all officers are frontline but they're on the streets the most dealing with 
citizens like let's say patrolling around Ruby High Street like all people would do but they would like transport the prisoners to custody and stuff so it's important they do know the law and maybe we can get some advanced training in place. My last my last question for you is would you like to say anything about the recruitment drive? Just last last chance to say hello, come to the come to the um public services. So uh, our recruitment drive it's essential that obviously during this time with their activity increase that people are applying for our public services and our public services do require more staff and obviously more recruits to start joining. And I know there is obviously an increase. Uh, let's just say Greater Manchester Police are getting 80, 70 to 80 applicants per week, uh, which is obviously a decent amount of people applying. But we, we obviously want to increase this recruitment drive more into obviously Northwest Ambulance Service and Greater Manchester Fire and Rescue where it's not mm -hmm. as prioritised, uh, let's say, by the people who uh, because it's more extensive training. Like, let's say, Northwest Ambulance Service, you need to like learn how to treat people, uh, what drugs to use, and all this stuff. Like when you're treating someone, so it's more extensive. And I feel people do push their way from extensive uh, activity. I've been in Northwest Ambulance Service. I've been in Greater Manchester Fire and Rescue. They're great services to work in. You get a lot of great knowledge, which you can use in GMP. Uh, like once you go through the stages as a paramedic, you learn obviously first aid, basic medical, you learn how to treat people. So then like you take that if you say, leave Northwest Ambulance Service, you get that first aid experience, which you can take to GMP or GMFRS, and you can treat people whilst, and whilst they're coming to the scene or something like that. So all Got three that. services are great to work in. And people should be applying for all three services, get, get, get learning new skills, meeting new people, meeting new friends, making friends. It's, they're just great places to work, and I feel people should extend themselves more. And this is what our recruitment campaign is trying to push. Can I just add that like the basic first days you learn in uh, ambulance service, some of that could be used in real life because it's, it's quite... Um, yeah. It's not like made up, it's like from real facts. So, for me being involved in the uh, Northwest Ambulance Service since I joined, I've nearly been in uh, the UK full, full for a year now. I was back uh, here in 2018. But um, the service, you obviously learn basic skills like CPR, uh, how to like treat certain things. So you take these skills with you. You memorize these skills because you need to treat them in game or in a virtual game. But then. If you see something happen in real life and there's no like medical and you need to treat medical, you have these basic skills like that. And it's like really good skills to learn, actually, I feel, from a, a game on the computer, which some people would say uh, going on your computer yeah. is a bad thing, but you're actually learning some good things. by Yeah, being... there, there, there is definitely a realistic yeah. aspect within the United Kingdom. I can definitely agree it's, with you there. Even you though, learn a lot yeah, of good skills. Say, you learn a lot of good skills. You might say it's all, oh, it's mega blocks, and yeah, but yeah. in reality, it, it, there, it, is, it is a game, but as well, you can learn a lot of good and new skills. Um, mm. I would like to thank you, Home Secretary, for coming onto the show, and I would like to thank you, Oliver J. Ranford, the Tactical Firearm Constable, for yep. keeping our streets safe, and we appreciate it. Um, so, we are now at your favourite part of the show once again, and that is an advert break. Thank yep. you both of you for coming on to the show. Thank you, Sean. No worries, cheers. Commonwealth Games 2020 have been taking place recently. Events such as swimming marathon, triathlon, fencing and athletics have been taking place over the past couple of days. The Games brought Commonwealth nations together and representatives could have a good chit chat while watching their athletes in competitive events. The medal tallies are as such Bar Baran are top of the medal ta tallies, and then in second is the United Kingdom with Ireland, Ireland sorry, in third. 
the Commonwealth Games Overseer believes this has been a successful first Games. Avia Jazz spoke to us and commented, I personally think the UK 2020 Commonwealth Games are doing amazing. Lots of countries have been taken been taking gold home and I'm just so happy that the games have worked out so well and in the way I wanted them to. I really believe that people think think that the Commonwealth Games were much fun and that they were enjoying them. I really hope we can see a Commonwealth Games 2021. It is believed that athletes enjoyed the games and look forward to another one being hosted and I've most certainly enjoyed it when I've been at the games. I thank you all for tuning in for this week's edition of Five Moons and hopefully we'll be back we will be back next week. And I would like to remind you to follow follow our Twitter, C C5 underscore R B L X and please like and subscribe. I thank everyone for tuning in. I've been Sean Rack with Five Moons. It's been a pleasure getting over and out.